Hello, citizens. This is Counselor John Carla Carra, Ward 9 TV. This is two, part two of our big financial question. We were talking uh, in the last video, the first video, about the tax shift and the hole in our revenue stream. And that's really sort of focused on the operating side of the city's budget. What I want to talk about now is the capital side of the city's budget. And what we've been doing over the years is tightening up the operating side, looking to uh, continue to serve Calgarians with the same level or increasing levels of service while reducing the cost of government. We've taken a lot of that money over the downturn and pushed it into capital projects. Uh, since 2014, we have put $5 billion of capital uh, projects into play keeping Calgarians employed and uh, building the city of the future that will drive our next economy and be less uh, reliant on our amazing oil and gas sector. So my last video when I was talking about the operating side, I was at the uh, Cabin Brewing Company. Right now I'm next door in the heart of the Barley Belt at Confluence Distilling and I think you should come down and see this place because it's super cool too. In any event, this brewing and distilling, of course, is part of that sort of uh, maker-based new economy that is helping to diversify Calgary's economy and sort of creating the base for, for our next hundred years of success as, as a civilization. What we're talking about now is how to build the next four mega projects that will help drive that. Of course, things like the Green Line, ongoing, funded, and we're working to get uh, additional funding. I just shot a video earlier today about big regional moves like passenger rail from Calgary to Banff. There are four big projects that we really need to solve. One of them is to turn the Stampede into a year-round uh, event venue and that is to double the size of the BMO Center. That's about 500 million dollars. The other of course is uh, to take the Saddle Dome uh, down and build the next major arena, which is now called an event center because of its outward facing focus on events. Uh, and that is a $600 million hit. Uh, we are talking about a historic redux of the Arts Commons to, and, and a re, a really a redo of uh, Olympic Plaza and all of that in the heart of our entertainment district. Those three mega projects all really anchor our entertainment district and really rationalize the heart of the Green Line as it spreads to the west and into the southeast. And then the fourth mega project is uh, the Field House. It is about $300 million. Arts Commons is in the $300 million range. The Field House is the largest unfunded recreation um, uh, imperative of the city of Calgary. It has been embarrassingly since the 1950s and you go all over Canada, cities big and small have these field house facilities and the fact that Calgary doesn't is a significant issue. The field house itself will be placed up at the university because the economics of a field house are in order for it to be uh, to, to make money, it has to be attached to a university so its kinesiology programs can use it during the day and then the public can use it uh, during the evening. So, you know, that's uh, getting up to a $1.6, $1.7 billion investment in major capital infrastructure that will help us drive Calgary into the future. And the question is, where do we get that money? As I said, we've been spending the last uh, several years tightening up how the city runs, taking those savings, putting it into capital funding, taking grants, taking uh, you know, uh, um, savings, uh, reserves, things like that, tightening everything up and getting money out the door faster. And the question is, as we constrict down to the point where you can't constrict anymore, is there any money left in the coffers to do that $1.7 billion stretch and deliver those projects? And so your council has spent the last several months deeply diving into that question and all of that culminated on March 4th where we um, approved a financial strategy for doing that. And what that financial strategy basically is, is it's a worst case scenario based on the idea that we're sort of constricting down, we're expecting savings up to a point. Can we move money around and can we without significant uh, inputs that are you know, 
not stated from other orders of government and from private sector partners, can we deliver these projects? And we have a financial strategy that can do that. And again, it's a worst case scenario and it's very tight and it has you know, challenges, but we know that it's the absolute floor. It won't, if, it, if it gets any worse than that, we're out. We haven't addressed the idea of ever raising taxes to do that, but as we develop plans for this, we can always ask Calgarians, is this something that's important to us? Do we wanna take our famously low taxes and raise them a little bit so we can dedicate and get that done? So you know, we have the off-ramp of saying, nope, this project's not gonna work, so we're out. We have the uh, escape hatch of potentially raising revenue if it's something Calgarians wanna do. And it doesn't address the fact that once we start on the path of delivering all of these four things, a whole bunch of opportunities will open up in the, in the form of partnerships from other orders of government. And in the case of the Field House and the Events Center, uh, significant participation from the private sector. So I'm very happy that we have now a path forward. We have signaled to the markets, to the citizens, to everyone, that this is something we're moving forward on. Now the question is, can we take that worst case scenario and make it sweeter and sweeter? And I'm sure that we can, but I'm looking forward to hearing from you about uh, your support for those things. And I'm also interested in hearing about that in the context of our last video on the tax shift and how we get these things straight. So as you know, we're having a big conversation about taxes on March 18th, where we talk about how to solve the shift. And we'll be making a decision for the 2019 tax roll on April 1st. So please plug into all of that and uh, come on down to the Barley Belt. And this is Councillor Giancarlo Carras signing off. Thank you.